this. I found a time machine. A time machine? Awesome. Well, yeah, except, well, it can't go forward. There's a button. There's not a button, unfortunately. I looked, I tried turning it this way and that, and obviously I'm not going to go back in time. You can't go back? Well, going back in time would effectively erase One Piece, you know? Like, going back even one week would erase the latest chapter and or episode that's come out. And I just love it so much. I can't erase it, you know? Well, you know, now that I think about it, there might be one episode in particular that I might want to go back in time and see as it came out. Uh, episode 9? Like like the one we should be watching? <laughs> no, no, no. Before the anime One Piece was even a thing, the manga was coming out, it was getting a little popular, they knew they wanted to turn it into an anime, but they wanted to give people a little taste, a little, you know, something to tide them over to get them interested. And so they hired a special OVA, an original video animation. So this episode would obviously not be canon. Clearly, it was supposed to get people kind of interested in the story, but it took... Pl- Anyways, would you like to know where it took place in the series? Sure. It takes place between episodes 8 and 9. Would you look at that? That's exactly where we are. So if we use this time machine, we go back, we can watch it exactly in the canon where it belongs. Do you want to go back? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I think it's right... Countless people were sent to the seas, Curtis. Haven't you paid attention to the opening? This is the great pirate era. Not the poo-poo pirate era. Not the okay pirate era. The great pirate era. Wait, you mean there's more than just Luffy out there who must have been the pirate king? This is the intro song to the podcast, King of the What Now. Join us as we go on a journey, going to talk about pirates, battle and adventure. We think we're pretty funny, we hope you will too. Luffy, he's got to be the king of something. We weren't really listening, sorry about that. Hopefully he'll achieve his dreams, yeah. Hello, fellow Adventures of the Grand Line. Welcome to episode 9 of King of the What Now. We're here to discuss the anime One Piece. I'm Joel, longtime fan. And I'm Curtis, known newbie. I recently escaped the clockwork orange-styled bindings, but have chosen to stay and watch more episodes now that Stockholm Syndrome has set in. All according to plan, and he hasn't even met the best character yet. So good. You mean Zoro? No, not quite. Zoro's his big brother, bigger Zoro. I, I, he how? wears sunglasses. He wears a leather jacket. He has the 17 sword style. He shoots lasers from his left eye, but only his left eye. So you mean future Zoro? No, I mean bigger Zoro. They I fight each other. You. All right, we need to actually discuss this episode. We just finished watching the OVA, the original video animation, Defeat the Pirate Ganzak. And I keep accidentally thinking that his name is Gaznak. It's Ga. Oh no. Oh no. It's Gan Zack, okay? He has the normal name that I'm used to, Zack, in there, and I can I can remember that way. Anyways, so what this episode is, is a is a is a out of the timeline episode that's not based off of anything in the manga, so I don't have to ask you if it's filler because the the exact definition is that it is filler, it's non-canon, mm-hmm. but it takes place about where we are in the anime, so we decided to watch this instead of continuing on with the next episode. Yeah. Curtis, can you succinctly summarize the episode? Yeah, okay, so we've got the pirate crew, they're sailing along in one boat now. Yeah, it's so weird. Two. One of them must have capsized. And Probably, so- and I'm sure it's going to resurface randomly in the next episode. <laughs> Anyways, so they're sailing along, all of a sudden... This, like, bomb slash missile comes out of the air out of nowhere and sinks their ship. It happened really fast, but it looked like a bullet to me. Like a bullet that was big enough to take out an entire ship. Yeah, it's basically a bullet bill without a face. Okay. And takes out their boat. And then Nami gets taken away by a a sea dragon. And Luffy and Zoro sink to the bottom of the ocean because Luffy can't swim and he's trying to get Zoro to save him and then they die and that's it. That's the whole show. It's over. Yeah, Nami will become the king of the pirates in Luffy's place. He made such an impact on her that even though she hates pirates, she'll be a pirate herself. Yeah. No, actually, so they wash up on 
up on shore and Luffy ends up waking up in the middle of a fight where these pirates are trying to attack this little girl because they're being actual pirates. Can you describe the little girl? Is there anything about her visually that's... She's wearing armor. Yeah, she's too, so small that you can't really see her in the armor and she clearly doesn't know how to carry this, use the spear that she's carrying. She's trying to protect herself. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I didn't yeah, yeah. Continue. So then Luffy wakes up because he was passed out, but he uh, he wakes up and he saves the little girl and she's like, oh, thank you. And then they end up going back to her house and Zoro is there already eating food and then they eat food and then the cannon that's on the island, which is a giant smokestack of a cannon, shoots straight up in the air and it lands somewhere off the island and it shakes the island and it causes Luffy to spill his food and he's sad. It also causes a little bit of exposition, I believe. Yes. They talk about how the island's been overrun by this pirate Ganzak, and Luffy's really upset about the food, but not the Ganzak. And then they're like, you know where you can find some food? Go and defeat the pirate Ganzak. And so then he goes to defeat the pirate Ganzak, and he gets captured instead. And guess who else is there? Nami is there. Nami is there. So apparently Nami got made friends with Ganzak. Yeah, top five anime betrayals. Nami leaves the crew after half an episode. Yeah. And then they're having a big party and Zoro and Luffy and the little girl in the armor whose name I've forgotten are all chained up on the side. Madaka. Madaka. I believe I, I actually couldn't hear through the headphones. So I only was able to read the subtitles. But it was M E D. E-K-A. Medeka? Medeka? Anyways. Yeah, anyways. So they're all chained up, right? Oh, yeah, and earlier they tried to save her dad, who is apparently a slave working for Ganzak. Ganzak. And there's a lot of dynamite, which will be important later. Yeah, yeah. So they're using dynamite for... Excavation kind of thing? I I guess, but it doesn't quite make sense. Look, they're using dynamite to do piratey things. Can we move this along? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. So they're using dynamite to use piratey things. Now they're all chained up. <laughs> and the pirates get distracted and they leave. And Nami's there. And they get distracted because... Oh, so yeah, because... Luffy they, and Zoro show up to try and save these people, I guess. They wanted they want to beat up the pirate Ganzak. The little mm-hmm. girl, because she's a little girl, is like, I'm going to blow our cover. And then they yeah. get surrounded. And then someone mysterious kidnaps the girl. But it turns out that was Nami. And now they're all tied up. But yeah. their appearance gave the people the courage they needed to start their own revolt. Yeah, so they set a revolt. And then that's what distracts Ganzak and his pirate crew. And they leave. And then Nami's like, hey, I was just doing this to get in and get the treasure. And also, I'm going to save you. So she starts unlocking all of them. And they get all get unlocked, right? Well, the pi- Ganzak and his pirate crew are going out to deal with the rebellion. And then Luffy and Zoro and that go outside also. And there's fighting. And eventually, I don't remember exactly what happens, but Ganzak takes his ship away, which is hidden inside the island. That's the thing they were excavating or whatever magical anime stuff they were doing with the dynamite. Yeah, for some reason, his, so his ship is where the giant smokestack cannon is. And it's in the island. And they get it out of the island. And it goes to sail. And then there's more fighting. And there's fighting on the ship. And then it looks like Ganzak beheads the girl in the armor because the the helmet of the armor falls on the ground after he slashes at her and this is after he's bound up luffy during their fight then luffy's like oh no and then he defeats ganzak and then the girl's head pops out of the rest of the armor she's like oh look i was just kidding <laughs> and he's like oh okay and that's the end of the episode and they get more food and they're good yeah, absolutely. There's a there's an arc with Madaka where she hates pirates. Luffy conveniently doesn't mention that he's a pirate when he when she saves him and takes him to give him food. Oh, yeah. And then she finds out when Nami's freeing him and she's like, I can't trust you. But then at the end, after he's defeated Ganzak, she saves him from drowning. He's like, I can't swim. I got a devil fruit. And then at the very end of the episode, she gives him a flotation device in case he almost drowns again. And it says, thank you on the bottom. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to confess to only half paying attention to this episode because because of the nature of the episode, I already know that it's filler. Curtis, I want you to get out right now. I know that 
now that you have come full circle and you enjoy watching this anime with me, this is now a punishment, whereas two episodes ago in our podcast, it would have been a release from your pain. Wait, are, are you serious? You want me to leave? Yes. Oh, well, fine. Okay, I'm, I'm going now. Bye, Joel. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Hello, Grand Line Adventures. This is Joel bringing the journey to an end. I lost my Nakama. We haven't even had the chance to establish that that's a word that I would know. I, I'm heartbroken. Um, so really quick, I'm just going to summarize the next 800 episodes really quickly, just off the top of my head. Best boy is Twirly Prince. Best villain is obviously, you know, the, you know, the one, you know, exactly the one, the one who is despicable and all that other stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes when you follow your dreams, it just doesn't work out. Wait, Joel, Joel, Curtis, Joel, Joel. you've returned. I'm back. I couldn't stay away. That's not the way Stockholm Syndrome works. I never knew how much I needed you in my life. My friend, let us never part ways ever again. I'll never leave you again. Perfect. Now, any, do you have any thoughts about this episode? Did you like it? Or because it was filler? No, okay. Just... No, no. So, so it was filler. But I enjoyed the episode still. Okay. I mean, just because it doesn't have any ramifications on anything else doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I will tell you the number one thing I enjoyed about this episode. Was it Metal Jesus? No. Oh, I'm surprised. There was saxophone in it. (laughs) There was saxophone music. That is like, so that is a level of anime that we have not seen yet. I have a soft spot for saxophones. So like things like, if you've ever heard the theme from Cowboy Bebop, it it has a saxophone in it. Okay. If you listen to the full version of the theme, it has this long saxophone solo. It's great. So everyone, in case you were trying to keep track, we are both giant nerds. I tried to sell this as one guy who's more nerdy than the other one, but it turns out Curtis was just a nerd in a different way all along. Do you, do you want to, are you going to cut that part out? No, I'm not going to cut that part out. Why would I? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyways, there's saxophone music in this episode, Joel, and it's amazing. And I love it because just like... You know, the, the normal music in One Piece is good. You haven't gotten to the part where the music is really amazing. I I under I see what you're saying, yeah. right? You're looking at this from the perspective of someone who's at the very beginning. The music was pretty good in this episode. There's a couple of tracks that emotionally work on me, but I've had 800 episodes. You've had yeah. nine yeah, right, yeah. or whatever. Okay. Also, the, the action in this episode is also pretty good. Yes, I would um, agree. I would say it's standard but the way you've you've pitched the episode to me i can't remember if you described this at the beginning of our episode mm. but it was as a, a basically like an extended trailer for people who hadn't seen one piece yet to get them to come watch one piece right that's correct so in that function it works well because the action is good it's not necessarily over the top, but you don't want it to be over the top because you want it. It's like a it's like a teaser, like come watch more and you get to see even more down the road. Right. So absolutely. OK, so here's the question that I ask every single time. And this makes me grin like an idiot. What do you think will happen in the next episode? <laughs> do you well, think we'll see Ganzak come back from the dead? I if we see Ganzak come back, I will die. Ganzak's back, back, back. <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll make a whole song about it. <laughs> It'll have saxophone and everything. That's the combo that we needed. We need Ganzak to come back, having realized that he needs to work harder to become the next Pirate King, and the tool that he will use is the saxophone. Crab's playing saxophone. Of course. That is something that we didn't mention in our summary of the episode, is that his design's really interesting. He has armor that basically makes him look like a crab but he gets really upset when he's called a crab. I think they were trying to go for the -the over-the-top humor that you can sometimes get in One Piece, but I don't think that it's the best joke because Mm -hmm. why would you dress like a crab if you don't want to be called a crab? Well, it's like we just came off of the Buggy the Clown thing, and he had the same issue. I mean, I get his nose is like a a physical... Yeah, he can't really do anything about that, really. I don't think they have plastic surgeons in One Piece. But he obviously played into the clown thing, right? And he kind of highlighted the nose thing. So... I mean, it, it, they. I feel like they went off of that same joke again for this. 
Which, sure. again, if this is like someone's first introduction to One Piece, it might not be such a big deal. But for those who are watching and then watch this, are like, we just got done with that. We didn't need that joke again. I do really quickly, this is a bit of a tangent, but I do want to talk about the nature of filler in One Piece. Or, not in One Piece, in anime in general, in Shonen. That's my specialty. In Shonen anime, the characters will get a new technique, right? So mm-hmm. in Bleach, he eventually gets like a second sword type of thing. Yeah. That's actually not a very good example for what I'm trying to highlight. But anyways, they'll get a new technique. Let's say that Luffy learns how to fight with a tennis racket. That's his new weapon for whatever reason. They will Anytime an arc introduces a new concept and then it's immediately followed by filler, the resolution to the filler is always the technique that they just got in the arc before. Yeah. So if you pay attention, it's like, oh, anything that feels like filler that comes out about the same time, it's going to have kind of the same beat to it. Mm. So I think that's a little bit what happened here. That also, makes sense. Also, One Piece is supposed to be bizarre, so I think they tried to make him bizarre and also kind of funny, and they tried to encapsulate everything that was One Piece and one villain somewhat it, it, effectively. In that sense, yeah, I think it works. So this episode, as we just discussed, was a trailer basically for the anime that had not yet come out. If you had to take what you knew about One Piece and condense it down into a 30-minute episode, is there anything that you would have done to try to highlight some of the show's strengths that maybe this left out? I think it had all the elements that you would expect. It had people who didn't like pirates who ended up liking pirates. You had Luffy being the good guy. You had Zoro... And Nami protecting their their captain. Not Nami, he's not Nami's captain, but she was working with him at this point. That sort of thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I think well, because there's a lot of parallels to the earlier episodes, right? Like one, you've got Nami being Nami and Zoro being Zoro, right? Then you've got Luffy helping some community member on the island they're at, just because he feels like it's the right thing to do, right? Because of his moral compass. You've got, like you said. Somebody who didn't like pirates who likes pirates. We've already had that a couple times. Because mm-hmm. you have, like, basically every island we've been on so far, you've got, like, Kobe. You've got, um... Mayor Beetle. Mayor. Yeah. So stuff like that. You've got the kind of ridiculous villain, both in looks and, like, abilities and just kind of, like, what they're after in that, generally. Kind of just zen- general zaniness, too, in terms of what happens in the episode. So, yeah, no, I, that's a good point. Like, I, I feel like there's a lot of beats in this episode that repeat stuff that have happened already in all the previous episodes before where this episode falls in the timeline, right? Yes, I totally agree. As someone who had not seen this episode prior to watching with you, it was pretty good. It wasn't later uh, episodes of One Piece good, which I would argue get better, but they only had half an hour to set it up. Even if you have an hour and a half feature film, that might not be enough time to introduce you to the complexities. They were serviced by the fact that there are fewer m- characters to worry about. Later, the Straw Hat crew gets bigger, if you can imagine such a thing, and then you would have even more character conflicts. Not character conflicts. You would want, you would want a moment for each member on the crew, and that just makes that it makes mm. the necessary runtime even longer. Yeah. So I don't know if you have this planned for later or not, but I'd like to talk about the animation style too. Okay. Because the animation style is different in this episode than later. Yes. Mo- mostly it's it's obvious that they spent more time on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously the characters look similar, and so the animation style is similar. It's just better. It's more detailed. It seems like there are probably more frames per minute. Per second. Per second, yes. yeah. Um, because they, it's just like the motion's a little bit more fluid. And the way the water sparkles at the very beginning, oh. it's a very minor detail, but you don't get that kind of effect in the regular episodes. Yeah, no, that reminds me of like, what is it, like the second Pokemon movie I saw when I was a kid. They're going across the ocean on the Lapras or something like that. And it's like the sparkle in the ocean, stuff like that. Sure. So as far as I understand it, I'm not an expert, but I think I know maybe a little bit more than you. But it, I think that a lot of times anime will get in trouble for having lower quality things that don't look great but you have to remember that they're coming out with episodes every week without break and there are some shows we talk about my hero academia Mm -hmm. we reference it a lot that's a seasonal anime which means that you get off seasons where they can be developing future content but one piece releases every week without fail so i think that more time and more money went into this than they usually spare for an episode which explains the difference in animation Mm -hmm. 
which is also will eventually start watching the movies when they start happening canonically when they align with the timeline and a lot of the movies look great they were able to they had a lot more time to work mm. on it well i I guess I would say too, I don't mind the quality level of the anime normally, just because it, it ends up becoming part of the style, right? Sure. Like, you just kind of accept it as part of the... the aesthetic? Yeah, of the, the aesthetic of the show. And it just, it, it makes sense in that, and you get used to it. And you just accept the way it is. It is interesting, though, because when you watch this episode, you can definitely see the differences. And then also... Later episodes will get better. Oda himself, as an artist, improves. And then as the show gains more popularity, Toei and whoever else is in charge of making those decisions decides that they can give them more money, which means you can hire more people, which means that you can get more details. Yeah. I really don't know if there's anything else that we want to talk about. I will say... <laughs> When you almost broke my heart earlier, I mentioned the word Nakama, and I realized that there's certain things that don't fit into talking about the show episode by episode. So maybe we'll start having to do discussion episodes or something every 10 episodes or something at some sensible way. Let me just really quickly educate you and anyone at home who isn't familiar with the series. The word Nakama is the Japanese word for friend, but in the One Piece community, it's kind of become something even more. Luffy doesn't really have friends that aren't on the crew, but consider Cody, Kobe, for example. Kobe is kind of a friend, but you wouldn't call him a Nakama because he's not on the crew. He's not someone who's serving mm. kind of Luffy's... It's the word... When they translate someone who says, if Luffy says, I want you to join my crew, and he says, you know, uh, noro noro waza, or however the Japanese is, they will translate, I want you to be my, but instead of translating the, the word Nakama into the English crewmate, they will leave it as Nakama. And so it has a deeper meaning both in the show and to fans. Mm. I'm curious if it, in the in Japanese, if it also has a different meaning. Because, you know, there are a lot of words sure. that don't translate directly to English because they just have a different, different connotation to them. Sure, and, like there's different... According to some places that I've read, there's like some tribes that have different words for rain for like different like heavy rain and misty rain yeah, and that sort yeah. of thing. Exactly. I don't know. I don't have the answer to it. I know that when I first started reading One Piece, the manga, the word Nakama showed up a lot. And then I started reading Fairy Tale and they had guild members very similar to the pirate mm -hmm. crew. And for the longest time, they called each other guild members. And then I read one chapter where he said some. the main character was like, you're my Nakama. And my only thought was... You got that from One Piece because every other manga I've ever read has translated that word mm -hmm. if it's shown up. So either Oda uses a word that other people don't use or it's a special thing for that community. Well, if we uh, if we do an episode on that, we'll have to do some research and try to figure out more of what it means. And I completely agree. I never want to defeat, seem like I speak with authority on stuff that I don't know much about. But I'm also not really... Sometimes our conversations can be ad hoc, so I have no idea what to research before we discuss. Oh, yeah, no, 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 I okay. get you. Let me pull up my list of questions that I normally ask. All right, here's an episode that I agreed we would only bring up at the end of each arc, but this is a self-contained thing. An episode that you'd bring up at the end of each arc? Yeah, it's actually an arc that I bring up at the end of each podcast. So oh. my answer to you is who is MVP of this OVA? MVP is most valuable player, <laughs> and OVA is the thing that we just watched. I was just trying to figure out what the rest of that tracked. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you call me out on how I say things funny, and I will just gizglock the crap out of it, okay? I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, MVP, I think I'm going to give it to Nami. Okay. Because she was eaten, or taken at the very least. Mm-hmm. By a sea dragon and somehow became friends with their enemy and positioned herself in such a way that she could save the rest of them when they needed it, needed it. I mean, you're in the middle of the ocean, you get taken away by a giant monster, and you come out on top. That's pretty good. That is a wonderful point. I never would have considered that. I would have thought that the only like real answer would be Mad Madaka, however you pronounce her name, because Luffy was just kind of his normal self. He didn't really do anything that was that amazing. He did bust out a new attack, the sledgehammer, which is slightly different than the yeah. hammer that he used against 
the uh, lion tamer and uh, Richie, the lion, that's the name. But I'd say that Madoc is the only one, but now that you've presented your arguments, I understand that Nami is pretty cool. Also, I was a little bit surprised. At the very beginning, she gets eaten in the thing's mouth, and I turned to you and I said, oh, would you look at that? Nami is the damsel in distress, because early on that seems to kind of be a recurring thing every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But then she actually wasn't the damsel in distress. She didn't need to be rescued. She was the one who rescued them. So That's a good point. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it was a nice twist, actually. That, I didn't think about that until you pointed it out. I will say, though, as you pointed out, since everything, th- this felt a lot like the buggy arc. I will say that when she showed up the second time, she's like, I've turned evil. Yeah, we, we know, Nami, you did that literally last episode if you're watching these things like in chronological order. But it was an interesting twist. So you mentioned when you were re-describing the episode earlier, this was a trailer for the show. Did this come out? before the episode one aired yes it came out about a year before i think really yes oh so while it falls on the timeline at the point where we're watching it which is like episode what nine we're in between episodes eight and nine yes in terms of when the general audience would have seen it during the original airing it came out before episode one ever aired right okay so i guess that wouldn't been as bad because you're not getting the repeat of all these beats right though it does mean, like, if you saw this episode, and then later you start watching the series, you'd see, like, a bunch of repeated beats. Yeah, I can definitely see that. At the same time, we're watching it in a more kind of obsessive way, I guess. Yeah. I If you watch these in chronological order when they came out, you had a couple of months before the next one came out, and you had a couple of arcs in between with Zoro's introduction and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we're watching in a very particular way. And if that gives us certain insights, we're going to comment on them. That's just kind of our job. All right. You have, I'm going to give you 20 seconds for any final thoughts. I, what is anime? What (laughs) is anime? No, that was my Jeopardy answer. (laughs) All right. So your final thought on this episode is it was anime. No, it, it was definitely anime. Okay. I enjoyed it. Like we said, it was filler. I knew going into it was filler. And so that probably didn't help much. But I I did enjoy it. It was fun. It was a fun episode. 100% agree. A lot of people don't like filler, and I agree with that. It doesn't count, technically, right, in air quotes. However, if they were going to do filler arcs, I think having now seen a single standalone 30-minute filler episode, I'd prefer to have a filler arc of five or six episodes or longer where they're able to kind of flesh out the characters that show up. Uh, Ganzak is kind of one dimensional. It'd be a little bit more interesting if you could see how he posed more of a threat and you could give some breathing room between the crew getting separated and being reunited. Mm-hmm. But well, as a standalone, yeah, sure. It, it gives you everything that you need to know for the first couple of episodes. And if it, if you like this, you will like the first however many episodes. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess I'll ask me again once we get to the filler arcs. Which don't actually exist. The is this episode filler is actually just a trick question that I ask you every single time. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, folks, this was kind of a special episode. I forgot it was coming up in my episode list, so I will try to do better at letting you know when special episodes are coming out in the future. Next time will be episode 9 of the anime, and we hope to see you then. Thank you very much. All right, folks, we've reached the end of this episode for today. It's sad to see you go, but fortunately we'll be here next week unless we get hit by a meteor. In the meantime, you can follow us on all sorts of different social media. We have Gmail, Patreon, Tumblr, all of those are King of the What Pod, so patreon.com slash king of the what pod king of the what pod at gmail.com king of the what pod dot tumblr dot com that's all great if you want to follow us on twitter that name's a little different they restrict the length of your handles so you can follow us on twitter at cotwin underscore pod that's k-o-t-w-n underscore pod just take the name of the podcast and abbreviate it also please take a moment to rate and review our podcast on whatever platform you're using to listen That can be iTunes, Spotify, or whatever. Not only will this help others find the podcast, but your constructive feedback will help us improve the show as we go. We hope to grow and improve just like the Straw Hat crew. Thanks again for listening in. Be sure to check the feed next week for the latest episode of King of the What Now. Until then, follow your dreams and protect your treasure. Remember, that doesn't need to be literal treasure.